We are going to conclude this lesson with a discussion of pipelines. Pipeline is a general concept in data science and it involves taking data and performing transformations on it through a series of linear steps. So you have a certain source data set. You want to change it in a number of different ways uh, and you transform the data one step at a time until it has been turned into the form that you want. There is a package in R that has been designed to facilitate creating pipelines. Being an American, I probably would have called this package McGritter or something like that. However, the author of the package, Stefan Milton Bosch, says that uh, the package is to be pronounced with a sophisticated French accent. So I suppose it should be Magritteur. So I shall attempt to call it Magritteur as requested. The Magritteur package introduces a new operator called a pipe, and we will see how the pipe operator is used to create pipelines in R. Before I create the pipeline, I need to define each of the op transformation operations that I'm going to carry out on the data. So let's start by defining each of those one at a time. The first thing that I need to do is to get the CSV data read into R as a tipple. So I will repeat this step, which I've done before, and I can see that I've created a data frame called grades. The second step is to replace each of the NAs in the grade column with a zero. I'm going to set this up so that this is done in place. In other words, I am going to take the source test column and replace it with the uh, zeros that have been added and then go ahead and create a new data frame called fixed tests. So if I compare my first tibble with my new fixed test tibble, I can see that I fixed the test column by changing that NA into a zero. The next step is to fix the participation column. Once again, I am going to take the contents of the participation column replace the passes with 100 and the things that are not passes with 50, and then go ahead and assign it back into the participation column. I'm going to take the output of that operation and then create a new tipple called fixed participation. So here is my new tipple, and I can see that indeed I have replaced the participation column of character strings with a participation column that has numbers. I am then going to calculate a new column and to do that I'm going to use the transmute function. If you recall from before, the transmute does not add a new column to an existing data frame, but rather it creates a new data frame. It, so I'm going to start with the data that is in my previous fixed participation data frame, but I'm going to generate columns in the new data frame that consist of the name column and then a new column that I'm creating called average, and that's going to be the simple average of the test column, the paper column, and the participation column added together and then divided by three the output of that generation of a new tibble is going to be assigned to a data frame called average only. So if I look at that tibble, I can see that it has only the averages and also the names of the students and all the other columns have basically been left out. One problem with this tibble is that the two students who had not completed their papers yet were assigned a calculated average of NA. 
that actually makes sense because how can I calculate their final average when one of their grades is missing? So it makes sense that the output of a calculation in which one of the inputs is an NA should also result in an output of an NA. What I need to do is get rid of those NA students because they don't really have any meaningful grades. And I can do that using the filter function. I can take any of the rows in the average only data frame that have a value in the average column that is not an NA and filter those out and put them into a new tipple called final average. So now I, if I compare this, I can see that Fox, Foxtrot and Tanger have been left out of the tipple. The final step that I want to take is to arrange the grades. And I can choose to arrange them either in ascending order of grades, like this, using arrange, or I can arrange them in descending order of the average column by applying this descending function. So now I see I have listed them with the highest grade first all the way down to the lowest grade.